the Queen sits on your head. Yeah. When the Queen will be squatting down over me and reminding me of my subject status. <laughs> Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Great Britain. Welcome to the land where free speech is still allowed. You can say whatever you want. There's nothing to fear, not even fear itself. You can call Prince Philip a pedophile. You can call the Queen a woman who lives with a pedophile. But hey, it's free speech. Who cares? Keep reading your mainstream media newspapers. Keep watching Sky News. Keep watching BBC News. These are the arbiters of your true information. And ladies and gentlemen, in three weeks' time, well, 10 days' time, two weeks' time, don't forget to vote. It's very important that you vote so that you can maintain yourself in the big illusion of democracy. Do you not think for one second that power, money, and control are far too important to leave it to the plebs? Well, they are. Which is why the Conservative Party, the Labour Party, the Lib Dems, Nick Clegg, the new Osama, the, the, sorry, Osama Bin, the new uh, Obama, Nick Clegg, these people are fully in the pockets of the big institutions, the international financiers, what Carol Quigley called the permanent government. So ladies and gentlemen, you might as well vote for the BNP because whoever you vote for, the government always stays in power. Do you really think that Nick Clegg or David Cameron or Gordon Brown are going to withdraw troops from Iraq or Afghanistan? Do you really think any of these puppets are going to do anything about the massive surveillance state we're living in? The police fascist state we're starting to enter now with civil liberties being destroyed, CCTV cameras going everywhere, the police arresting 14-year-old boys in Camden. Look it up. I'm not just ranting. Look it up. The police arresting as many people as possible to get them onto the DNA database. But remember, ladies and gentlemen, you are the peasants. If you have nothing to fear, sorry, if you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear. So please report quickly to your nearest metropolitan police station where they will take a cotton bud, stick it in your inner cheek, and add you to the DNA database. DNA is the mathematics behind your soul, so who better to trust it with than the government? Because the government has your best interests, always. The government is killing and killing lots and lots of nice little children. But don't worry, they're brown children. It's okay, they're Iraqi and Afghani. They're not white. We have a luxurious world to uphold. We have a nice corporate control grid to maintain. And the best way to do that, using the military-industrial complex, is to build bombs. Bombs are the best thing in capitalism, because every time you drop a bomb, you have to build another one, because you can't quite reuse it. And another great thing about bombs, when you bomb a city like Kabul or Baghdad, then you can get American and British and Israeli contractors in there. Woo! Yeah! Yeah! As we all know, American foreign policy is... <laughs> And British foreign policy is also yee-haw, unfortunately. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, support the system. There is nothing wrong with living luxuriously as 25,000 children in Africa die. There's nothing wrong with living luxuriously when your government, which you pay taxes for, goes around the world having nice military adventures that just so happen, you know, collateral damage. It's not murder. It's collateral damage. It's what the newspaper tell you it is, you know? The only way to stop terrorists doing naughty things in London is obviously to bomb their families in Iraq and Afghanistan, obviously. And also, ladies and gentlemen, my friend Deke from the FKN News, I can't say the full name, but fucking... <laughs> You know Deke? Yeah, Deke is awesome. Deke has figured it all out. The reason we are in Afghanistan and Iraq is because the only two countries where terrorism can be organized are obviously Iraq and Afghanistan. That's why we must bomb them. To everyone walking past, I am being ironic. I hope you realize. <laughs> This is the first meeting of the crazyconspiracytheorist.com. 
We ask you not to research into the Rothschilds family and their connections with the financial world. We also, strangely enough, ask you not to look at the coat of arms of the Rothschilds, which just so happens to look exactly like that one, with a unicorn, with a chain around its neck and around its foot. Why is the Rothschilds coat of arms on the Queen's palace? Don't worry about it. Go back to sleep. It doesn't concern you. Go do your 9-to-5 job, pay your taxes, get your children to go to university, maybe a career in the armed forces would be good for them. But do not ever question the system. It's very boring and bad things happen to you. But you do get to hug lots of fancy dressed, fluorescent techno clubbing jacket officers. Some of them who speak English, other ones not so much. But hey, it doesn't matter. Just thinking. Do not research the Freemasonic control of certain financial institutions. Do not research the Freemasons' influence on the police. Certainly do not influence the massive Masonic lodge set up entirely for the police. And do not question why your police, which are meant to represent you, have the wonderful black and white checkerboard of the Masonic lodge floor around their skull, around their consciousness. Do not think about these things. Instead, pick up some leaflets from these ladies dressed as sumo wrestlers.
give your mind over to the corporations, keep buying lots and lots of nice corporate things, and that way you stay out of the way of the controllers as they try and make this world a better place. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Rothschilds Bank in association with the Illuminati, in association with all the other governments of the world. What we want to do is bring about a one world government. We have succeeded in bringing European Union under the same constitution. Those stupid Irish people voted incorrectly the, the first time round. So we gave them the Lisbon Treaty vote the second time round and gave them a bit more fear. And then they voted correctly the second time, they voted yes for the European Constitution. There is a clause in the European Constitution that anyone found to be treasonous or questioning the system can be liable to capital punishment. So I better watch what I say.